Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are Ohio. It will be remembered as a week where Cincinnati showed off its citywide love of Major League Baseball. There was a hometown boy bringing back the drama and excitement to the home run derby. The affection shown to not only the Reds franchise four, but also the top four living legends of baseball. The Cuban Missile lit the radar gun up to 103 miles per hour. And the first player to ever win back-to-back -back MVPs of the Midsummer Classic. That's all behind us. Now with questions abound, the second half of the year starts for the Reds against their in-state rivals with the Ohio Cup on the line. It is a hot, muggy, steamy night in downtown Cincinnati. We're set to begin the second half, if you will, of this Major League Baseball season, and it begins with the Battle of Ohio. The Cleveland Indians in town to take on the Reds in the first of a three-game series. Hi right, again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. And, Chris, I know you and I were both in town for all the festivities, and, boy, what a four-day run it was for Cincinnati. I mean, in the snap of a finger, it seems like it was over, but you look back on it, and there are so many moments of memories and great things that happened. How about the home run derby? I mean, could it get any better no. than the script that Todd Frazier was able to ride out to the very end? And, I mean, brought everybody in this stadium to their feet and cheered down that hometown boy. It was really something else. I mean, the new rules of the home run derby i think chris made it so much more exciting it was like having a game winning three at the at the buzzer i mean that's really the excitement that was happening every scene it seemed like every head-to-head -head matchup in the entire derby not just with todd frazier went right down to the wire that's why people were on the edge of their seats and of course when todd frazier lifted that one off of his brother to finally win it place went madhouse all right let's shift gears now to the second half of this season it starts tonight with a very good pitching matchup mike league for the reds trevor bauer on the mound for the indians well a couple of right handers a couple of young right handers at that trevor bauer had a very good game and he defeated the reds when the reds were up in cleveland by the way the indians swept the reds three games a night in that series at home though mike league has had his problems you see that higher run average bauer he's had five of his eight wins on the road he's thrown very well when he gets away from cleveland it's ought to be a pretty good pitching matchup a game that starts the second half well, let's get all eyes on the Ohio Cup. All right, when we come back, Jim Day will tie a ribbon around an unbelievable week for Reds third baseman Todd Frazier. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio.
Baseball weather tonight, hot and very humid down at the ballpark. Drink plenty of water, would you? 87 degrees, spotty thunderstorms, first pitch by the time you're leaving, 82 and partly cloudy. When I say spotty thunderstorms, there could be a few over southwestern sections of Ohio. And if one should happen to run over the ballpark, it could put down some heavy rain because this air mass is laden with moisture. We'll continue to watch radar. What do you think? One more standing ovation for Todd Frazier. He captured that uh, home run derby. He did indeed. Enjoy the game, everybody, on Fox Sports Ohio, and let's have a good second. Oh, we know it was raining home runs in Monday's home run derby. Todd Frazier, your reigning champion. We showed you in the first segment that shot after Adam Jones gave him the WWE belt or a replica of Todd Frazier held up. Well, World Wrestling Entertainment so tickled by it. They sent him his own today, and he's holding it right there in the clubhouse. It's about 10 pounds. It's authentic. Frazier tickled to death about it. We also talked to him about his break where he went back to Jersey. Because the other one was, yeah, it was, it was insane, man. Uh, just going to get a bagel uh, in the morning. Uh, a lot of people stopped me saying congratulations, and, uh, you know, the boardwalk was nutty, you know, a lot of fans, and uh, it, it's, it's just, it's a great town. Uh, they support, they support their guy, and uh, I really appreciate it. It was just, it was a lot of fun to be home. Frazier right back in the middle of that Reds lineup. Lineups and first pitch up next as the Reds trying to avenge a sweep against the Tribe. Tom and Chris are next. for the opener of this three-game series. Kipnis at second base. He was an all-star. Lindor, the shortstop. Michael Brantley in center. David Murphy in left. Carlos Santana at first. John Gomes healthy again behind a plate. Brandon Moss in right. Urshela down at third. And Trevor Bauer is on the mound. A record at eight and five. Six and five for the Reds. ERA slightly over four is right-hander Mike Leak. Making start number 19, Mike Leak has 11 quality starts, including one of the best games he's pitched all year was six days ago when he beat the Miami Marlins one nothing. Steve Reich one to Jeff Jason Kipnis and this one underway. Kipnis a 3.23 batter. Six home runs and 37 runs batted in. Leak not wasting any time, and it's one ball and one strike. Really, same thing he did against Miami. When he is at his best, he controls the pace of the ball game, gets it, and goes. The Reds have won eight consecutive games here at Great American Ballpark against the Cleveland Indians. 
That is one game shy of the Reds' longest home streak since they moved into Great American Ballpark in 2003. They've had three other teams where they defeated nine in a row. The Rockies, the Marlins, and the Astros in trying to make it nine straight, which dates back to 2011 against the Cleveland Indians. And that is our Elk and Elk storyline. See the Rockies 04 to 06, the Marlins 06 to 09, the Astros before they departed to the American League and the Tribe in town tonight. Broken bat played by Phillips, the one time Cleveland Indian, one away. The Reds on defense presented by Ford, and this is a group. That we're used to seeing pretty much day in and day out. Bird, Hamilton, Bruce, left center and right. Frazier, Suarez, Phillips, Votto, third to first. And a battery of Leak and Tucker Barnhart. Reds begin play 39 up, 47 down. The Indians four games under 500, and both teams are playing in very, very tough divisions. Indians behind the likes of the Royals, the Twins, and the Tigers. And of course, the Reds trailing what would be right now three playoff teams in the Cardinals, the Pirates, and the Chicago Cubs. Well, you know, the Indians are very similar shape. They're four and a half or so back in the wild card, but they have about nine teams ahead of them. And they've played much better lately. Uh, I mean, not in the last series when they lost two out of three against the A's, but before that, uh, you know, during the month of June, they played better. In May, they played better. They got off to a horrendous start in the month of April. And with Kansas City getting off to a good start and pedal to the metal, they've really separated themselves from the Indians, who are now 11 games back. And the Royals not wasting any time to begin the second half. They opened with a day game today in Chicago's U.S. Cellular Field and Kansas City walks away with a 4-2 win in that one. Lindor playing in just his 27th game. Started the year in the minor leagues. He's a guy they've been waiting on to take over as a regular shortstop and now he's here and they're hoping he'll be here for a long time. Strike three called and Lindor knew it. Uh, that was either a cut fastball or a four seam fastball for Mike Leake. It didn't look like it had a lot of movement on it. Lindor probably read it as a pitcher was going to move out of the strike zone. And it just never did. You see the little bit of a, a slider spin on that held its line. And that's exactly what that pitch was designed to do. Have the hitter give up on it. Michael Brantley's been bothered by a tender back pretty much his entire year. 292 hitter. Has five home runs and driven in 46 runs. He does have 24 doubles. Brantley finished third in the American League's most valuable player award balloting a season ago. But for those who watch the Indians day in and day out, they'll tell you he is just not moving like the player he was in 2014 because of the bad back. Three and oh. The Reds played in Cleveland over Memorial Day weekend and they were swept three in a row. And the Indians really kicked around Leak back on May the 22nd. Went four innings, allowed seven hits, five earned runs. That was a game where Mike Leak walked five batters. It's the only game he's walked that many since his first start of the year against the Pirates. And there's strike two. And it was really his only real bad game on the road. Mike Leak, we showed you the number of his earned run average here at home. It's up around six. But on the road, he's been very, very good. And you're looking at the numbers of the worst one he had all year long up in Cleveland. He went through a period of time there, about three or four starts, where he just wasn't Mike Leake. He didn't hit his spots. When he did miss his spots, it was in the middle of the plate. Or when he missed off the plate, it was way off the plate. And you contrast that to what he did his last time out against the Marlins, where he won eight innings of shutout baseball, beat him one to nothing, struck out ten, and was really all over the edges of the strike zone. 
Payoff pitch once more to Michael Brantley. And a breaking ball is low, and that's ball four. A two out walk to the Indian center fielder will continue the inning for David Murphy. Murphy, a 319 batting average, five home runs, 26 runs batted in. You know, by and large, the Cleveland pitching, especially its starting rotation, Kluber, Carrasco, Bauer, Salazar, Anderson, have been very good. Collectively, their ERA is a combined 3.5. This Cleveland team has had a woeful time scoring runs and their numbers with runners in scoring position and especially batting with the bases loaded are mind bogglingly low. Two and oh one Murphy. Nine of ten in stolen base attempts on the year, and a breaking ball on a 2-0 count drops in there. Two and one. Well, Murphy's the guy that provides him some power. He'll swing and miss a lot, but he also will hit the long ball. Jeff Kellogg calls the balls and strikes tonight. Brian O'Nor at first base making his major league debut. Is a second base umpire tonight. Carlos Torres. And Corey Blazer the umpire down at third. Look to the right side. That's Brandon Phillips territory. And that's all she wrote in the Cleveland first inning. Let's come to bat against Trevor Bauer. Scoreless game. Network stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com by Chevy. Check out their award winning lineup only in your tri state Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good, it's Skyline time. Boy, a tip of the cap to all the folks in and around Cincinnati inside the Reds organization, those at Fox Sports Ohio, around our entire community, whether it was the Union Terminal Museum, the businesses downtown. All the folks, the field dedications, the Reds Community Fund, anybody that had even a sliver to do 
with everything that went on in and around Cincinnati during the All-Star game is to be commended. Boy, did you make our great, great city so proud. A job more than well done, an extraordinary job done by all. What a week. It was a real team effort. It really was. I mean, from the bottom of the bottom all the way to the top and the planners that have been having this on the drawing board for four or five years. I mean, the the commitment and the teamwork of everybody that had to work to get it together, all those little venues. I'm telling you, I enjoyed it as a fan, and I I came away smiling every time I came down yep. here. Cincinnati Police, County Board of Commissioners, the mayor was everywhere. I mean, everybody. To the interns working inside the Reds department who were sleeping about three or four hours a night. Brandon, an excuse me swing. And on a 2 1 pitch, softly lines out to Santana. Take a look at the Reds lineup presented by Meyer. Joey Votto coming up. And Todd Frazier, you'll get a big round of applause, no doubt. Jay Bruce, Marlon Bird, and Eugenio Suarez in the middle. Bonhart, Leak, and Hamilton, the latter third. Trevor Bauer getting a chance to, as a regular member of this Indian starting rotation, a one time number one draft pick. Third pick overall, in fact, coming out of UCLA, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks. And my oh my, did they sour on him in a hurry? But Trevor Bauer is putting together a very good year for the Indians. Well, anybody who's drafted that high out of college, you know the projectability is, you know, the, the ceiling is nearly unlimited when you're talking about the first five draft picks in a major league draft. But I think that there were a lot of little issues with Bauer that the Diamondbacks are not willing to look past. And the Indians have shown a little bit more patience with Bauer and it's beginning to really pay off. And they were not issues with Bauer not to mislead anybody about the off the field issues. No, no, it was no, nothing, no, nothing like, like that. that. It had more to do with a lot of quirkiness. Uh, you know, he grew up, his father was an engineer and and he had uh, is a very very bright young man has an unconventional approach to his pregame preparation and all kinds of oddities as far as his mental makeup he applies a lot of science to pitching and and he rubbed the wrong way with his catcher initially in Arizona Miguel Montero and I mean it just went south right now he didn't really fit into the pitching mold that most pitchers fit into so he kind of came comes about it from a different angle you can even tell by his delivery I mean, that's a, a very unusual type of delivery. It reminds me a little bit more of Tim Lincecum than just about anybody else around. He's got a little herky-jerky motion in the, in the middle of it, but he generates a lot of arm speed. Uses his legs well. He throws eight different pitches if you include the screwball and the splitter. So he's his own man. I guess that's the best way you can kind of say that and when you're 21 years old and you're your own man and you don't have a, a, a track record to show sometimes it all it does is make people angry. So as you get more and more experience in the major leagues and more wins under your belt then they just say hey he just he just follows a different drummer. They don't start second guessing whether you're committed or not. But he was involved in that deal that uh, was a, a big deal obviously when it included Shinsu Chu and Drew Stubbs and Didi Gregorius. Uh, from the Reds moving all over the place between the Indians and the Arizona Diamondbacks, that three team deal. Throws a fastball up and gets Votto to swing and miss for the second out of the inning. Magical night indeed it was on Monday night during the home run derby when Frazier won it in walk off fashion as a number two overall seed defeating Chuck Peterson of the Los Angeles Dodgers which by the way what an impressive young man he is not only as a, as a hitter and that was a home run derby we haven't seen him play in person yet because the Reds have still not played the Dodgers this year. But the way he handled himself and the way he talked about Cincinnati and his whole experience here and uh, impressive. 0 and 2 to Frazier. Boy, and Frazier had to earn it too now. Once Peterson got on a run, 
He was whacking him into the seats. I thought he was going to hit one of Kentucky. Didn't he knock about six in a row out? I mean, six home runs, six swings. Mighty impressive. I mean, they call it a home run derby, but it was more like a show. Especially scripted to the fact that Don Brazier sure. ended up being the hometown hero in that. I mean, his parents were here. They had great interviews with his parents. His brother was his, his pitcher. And every time his brother threw a pitch at Todd didn't swing out, nobody knew his brother's name in the sands. They were saying, come on, bro, throw the ball over. <laughs> Tapper down to third base, and that will in the inning. The Reds are gone in order. And for the second, no score. Is twelve dollars, and don't forget the first twenty-five thousand fans in attendance receive an exclusive "Get Your Stash On" T-shirt thanks to Arm and Hammer. Come on down to the ballpark. Log on to Reds.com. Get underway tomorrow night at seven fifteen. Game two of this series. No score. We begin the second inning of Game One. Mike Leak against Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, and Brandon Moss. That one smoked right by Phillips into right field even with the shift gone and Santana aboard with the game's first base hit. Well Santana was one of the missing pieces for the Cleveland Indians when the Reds were up in Cleveland. And he brings a lot of thumb to the plate Santana does and. Looks like right there doesn't care whether there's a shift on or not. Where Santana moved from behind the plate to first base to make room for Jan Gomes. Gomes was out early in the year, injured, and now back behind the plate. Strike one. It's really been a lost year. In fact, the Indians people liken Gomes season to the one that Jason Kipnis had last year, where you get hurt very early in the season. You miss about six or seven weeks, and for whatever reason, you just have a hard time then kicking it into gear. It's a high fly ball in the left field. Bird initially did not see it. Now Marlin has it, one away. Like the Reds, the Indians have had some players that were either injured, a number of them, or guys, Chris, that aren't just doing the job. And front and center would certainly be Michael Bourne. 
for this team. You're not kidding about that. They've been very disappointed with what he has been able to do. He was supposed to be the guy at the top of the lineup to get them all going. They thought that with their starting rotation, and this is a very fine rotation, but they had a chance to hang right in there. Of course, they weren't depending on the fact that the Kansas City Royals are running away with that division very much in the same way the Cardinals are in the National League. It's a funny game. I remember, I, I believe it was Sports Illustrated. I hope I get that right, but I think it was SI that actually picked the Cleveland Indians to win the World Series this year. I mean, they had a lot of pieces you, you really did like a lot, but Swisher's been hurt most of the year. Getting under 200 in the limited amount of time that he has played, the disappointment from Bourne, the injury to Gomes. Well, they've been a really good team in the second half. Last year, an excellent team. Year before, an excellent team in the second half. Of course, you just wonder now if they're 11 games back in their division, whether they've just dug a hole too deep to climb out of. One ball and two strikes on Brandon Moss. And it's fouled away. It stays right there. Right now in the American League, the Yankees are the leader in the American League East. Kansas City, as Chris mentioned, the leaders in the Central. And the Angels a half game better than Houston. And right now the two wildcard teams would be the Minnesota Twins and the Houston Astros. With the Indians right now five and a half games back. In that wild card race. Also in the mix the Rays the Orioles the Tigers and Blue Jays all ahead of the Indians. So sometimes it's not as many. Games you are out of the wild card is how many teams are ahead of you that you have to leapfrog because they all have to go south in order for you to make up some ground. Breaking ball misses on a one two pitch. Count like, even to Moss. Looks like a little flinch out of Jeff Kellogg on that one. Got a little murmur in the crowd going. Sometimes when an umpire looks at a pitch and if he moves too quickly, you think he's already ready to raise his right hand. Two to delivery and this should be an easy double play Suarez to the bag and that's out. A hit none left after an inning and a half. We are scoreless. Bradley in center, flanked by Murphy and Moss. Her Shellen, our first look at him down at third. 
Lindor the shortstop, Kipnis and Santana on the right side, Bauer and Gomes the battery. No score, Reds come to bat, bottom of the second inning. They went down in order in the first. Bruce Bird Suarez coming up against Trevor Bauer. Pull foul, strike one to Jay Bruce. Boy, look at fastball getting one and just a hair quick on the trigger. You, know, you always wonder right after an all star break for guys that aren't involved in the game. They go home, you relax, you know, you stay in shape, you run, maybe even take batting practice. Sometimes maybe you just get away from it. And it's always interesting to see approaches and how guys come back. And then you ask yourself, well, if a player comes right off of a, a three or four day break where you're not taking any batting practice and you hit well right away, maybe you don't need BP every day. Well, it's a hotly top, uh, hotly debated topic, I think, on every team in all the Major League Baseball. For that matter, even in the minor leagues, are guys hitting too much? Yeah. Because nowadays, these players are getting to the ballpark at 1 and 2 in the afternoon. And they're looking at video, and they're hitting off the tee, and they're hitting soft toss, and they're taking more batting practice from a, a special left-handed pitcher than a, a, an assistant hitting coach. And when it all comes down to it, you're just trying to foul off the tough pitches and hit the mistakes. Pretty good curveball right there from Bauer. Four in a row retired by the Cleveland right-hander to begin the game. Two of them on strikeouts and here's Marlon Bird. 241 batter, 14 home runs, 32 batted in. Down the right field line, you can get a cheapy down in that corner and it's foul. Well, the Reds evidently have a game plan that says Bauer is going to lead a lot of hitters off with first pitch fastballs, at least the first time through the order. Bird did hit him for a home run earlier this year when the Reds were up in Cleveland. And who swings at the first pitch the most? Well, this list will show you. Carlos Gomez of the Brewers and Marlon Bird over 50% of the time. So. He comes out of that on deck circle ready to wheel that lumber. Oh, and two on Marlon Bird. Bauer went to UCLA as a 17 year old freshman won nine games his first year was a freshman all American as a sophomore a 12 game winner and set a school record in strikeouts there's a fly ball well hit into right and Bird goes the other way for a home run. Number 15 for Marlon Bird and a 1 0 Reds lead here in the second. How about that? Marlon Bird makes some pay on an 0 2 count. He nearly hit one on the first pitch he saw going the other way. He just provides a little bit of a bat speed action, and that ball flies out of here to right field. You know, when it gets hot here and these thermals begin to work a little bit, it doesn't take a whole lot to pop one out of here, really, to any part of the ballpark. You get a guy as strong as Bird going, all he's got to do is get him airborne. And he is strong. Mm -hmm. The Eugenio Suarez falls behind 0 and 2 to Bauer.
And a nice piece of two strike hitting right there. The shoots one the other way in the right field. Back to back hits a home run and now a single. So it's going to be fun to watch this young man play in the second half of the season because he's going to play virtually every day. And that is a good bit of hitting right there because there was a hole open on the right side. He's getting a two strike pitch. So he should be shortening up his approach, if not his swing. And he just takes what the pitcher gives him. Bauer gives him a much too good of a pitch on an 0-2 count. But back to back 0-2 hits, the Reds are in business. Tucker Barnhearted, 247, three home runs and seven runs batted in. We're talking about Bauer. He came back his junior year at UCLA and he won that prestigious Golden Spikes Award. Struck out 203 batters in 137 innings. And look, wow. he's playing in a big time conference here. Pac 12 baseball has a lot of very, very good teams. He broke virtually every record in UCLA history. Well, dribbler foul. And as you mentioned, Tom, he went there as a younger freshman. So it wasn't like he was held back a couple of years in order for him to be able to compete at the college level. He went up there and the guys he was striking out were usually a couple of years older than him. You know, some of the stories on this guy, he's a very interesting read, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. well, we talked about his father was a chemical engineer. His name's Warren Bauer. Now he didn't play much baseball according to legend but he taught his son to to view pitching through a scientific prism if you will they read about Cubans who threw coconuts to build arm strength. So what they did was they soaked baseballs in water to make them even heavier. They drove nails into softballs. That's an old Nolan Ryan trick. I mean they had all kinds of different things going on. That went into right field a base hit and that'll send Suarez on to third base. Three straight hits for the Reds against Bauer. You may think that this is where the National League teams really have the upper hand, especially if you've got a pitcher in a ball game like the Reds do tonight. Mike Lee, who can handle the battle a little bit. Options are wide open now for Brian Price. You can give Leak a swing, see what he can do on a first pitch if he gets a fastball here. You can wait, put a, a butt on, you can put a hit and run on. With one out, you've got a lot of opportunity to do different things. Looks like he's going to bunt. has five hits and 43 at bat so far this year. They start the runner. He bunts it. Here comes a runner from third and safe as a call. So the squeeze put down by Mike Leak and it's a 2 nothing ball game. Well a good job by Leak. Excellent call by the Reds right there after going one and oh you got to figure power. Hey, you show me that you were going to bunt. I'm going to throw you a strike right here. And nothing better for a guy that has a suicide squeeze assignment than know that he's going to get a strike. Leak, all he's got to do is keep it fair and on the ground. He does that, picks up an RBI in the Reds lead to zip. Of course, that has scored a sacrifice and then a fielder's choice, the decision made by Santana to try and come to the plate. So four in a row reach base, two score, and now the number nine hitter, Billy Hamilton. Billy hoping for a much better second half of the season. He had the great month of June a year ago. A 
Washington and really fell on hard times the rest of the way. Bauer cuts it loose, and that's quite a play by Bauer. They will give Hamilton the sacrifice because that's the way this game is scored in baseball. And the runners advance to second and third. Well, a bang bang play at first base, and it took a Probably a mid 90s fastball from Trevor Bauer to throw Billy Hamilton out. He really unloaded. He kept his wits about him too because he had Giovanni Ursula coming right in there, kind of bumping him as he fielded that ball. That could have really turned sour on the Indians. Brandon Phillips, an excuse me swing, soft liner caught by Santana leading off the Reds first. He has runners at second and third and Cincinnati a two nothing lead over Bauer and the Indians. Barnhart and league is third and second base. And the fastball evens accounted one ball and one strike big crowd on hand tonight. This Friday night. Of course, our regular fireworks Friday night will follow the ball game. Night game tomorrow, day game Sunday. Then the Cubs come in for four games in three days starting Monday night. They appeal, no. Two balls and a strike to Brandon. Two and one on Brandon Phillips. And now the count even. The woo of the crowd there because the reflection of a lightning strike, I think. Maybe an approaching storm. I thought there might be a possibility of a pop up shower. Mm -hmm. Heard from Tim Hedrick before the ball game uh, that possibility exists. Guess a couple of fronts due to move through Cincinnati. During this evening's hours. Three and two now on Phillips. Runners at second and third with two away. Three balls, two strikes on Brandon Phillips. And Bauer to the plate. And he loads him up for Joey Votto. Ready to that Cleveland bullpen. Terry Francona will send his pitching coach Mickey Callaway out for a visit with Bauer before this base is loaded encounter with Joey Votto. Well, occasional wildness is something that you get with Trevor Bauer. In fact, some advanced scouts will tell you, you know, on any given night, if you get him on the right night, you can stand at the plate, and there's a good chance you're going to get four balls before you get three strikes. I think early in this inning. Even after he struck out Jay Bruce on three on four pitches. He ended up giving up an 0-2 bit home run to Marlon Bird, an 0-2 base hit to Suarez, and he's become a little bit timid about coming right after the hitters. Although his recent starts, his control has been very good. Still 44 walks now and about 86 innings. That's one every other inning. So Votto trying to add to already big time numbers in his career with the bases loaded. And fooled on the first pitch fastball. I mean coming right in there on the inner part of the plate with heat. 
Barnhart, Leak, Phillips. The runners at third, second, and first. Two are out in the inning, two are in in the inning. And it's a ball and a strike on Joey Votto, struck out swinging his only time up. Bottom fell out of that pitch from Trevor Bauer. It really never started as a strike. Well, when you throw as hard as Bauer does, mid 90s, sometimes you're swinging at the arm action. Well, the Reds have already had a couple of three of them, in fact, two strike hits in the inning. And that's strike three call. Wow. Reds leave them loaded. They do get a pair, and they lead at the end of two, two nothing. The pitcher set to hit second in this inning. The guys talked about his quirks as a pitcher. He's got quirks as a hitter, too. The few times he's hit in interleague play, he likes to imitate teammates. Check out this video. First of all, Ryan Rayburn. Little imitation right there. Jason Kipnis, who certainly has a distinct batting style. And even Mike Avilas. So Trevor Bauer having some fun as a pitcher. He's quirky and quirky at the plate as well, gentlemen. All righty, Jim Dave. Thank you very much. Good stuff there. Reds lead 2 0. We'll get a look at Bauer here in this inning. He's due up after Urshela. Indians very high on Urshela. In fact, uh, They've seen him enough where they're already talking about this guy potentially being a gold glove winner one day. All right, wait a minute now. Apparently, one of those fronts is almost directly upon us. And we get a look. Now, is that the current radar or is that the same loop that we, a video that we've seen over and over for the last month? Great question. Because it looks awful familiar. Mm -hmm. The green and blue and red. Oh. They're saying it's not raining yet, but it's going to rain. And uh... oh, we're going to play until it gets wet. All right. Maybe it won't. Well, thank God the breaks in the weather we got uh, during all the festivities in and around the All Star game. I mean, it rained like crazy. On Monday, 
Skies cleared beautiful and after the fireworks were shot off about 20 minutes after the home run derby ended it poured down rain again. We got more rain during the day on Tuesday but once the all star game night festivities got underway it could not have been nicer. We were extremely extremely fortunate. It turned out the way it did. Well, you never know because it happened when we were in Washington, D.C., that they called the game and it never rained. Nope. And we had, of course, had to wait for the plane to arrive for the Reds to take that plane from Washington, D.C., down to Miami on that last road trip. But from the hours of about well, 6.45 in the evening to the time that we finally left about 10 or 10.30, it never rained hard enough to... It never it. rained, period. Yeah. You and I were sitting in the TV booth. We were, uh, we being the Reds traveling party, whatever that is, 50, 55 people. Mm -hmm. We were the only 55 people left in that entire ballpark for probably the last three hours we were in it. Yeah. And it didn't rain a drop. Hopper to Brandon Phillips, and that'll take care of Bauer. The first two set down here in the top of the third inning by Mike Lee. Now, both of these teams have a tough road to hoe looking at the second half. Each of these clubs must contend with remaining schedules that rank among the very toughest in Major League Baseball. In fact, the Reds, based on records at the All Star break, have the toughest schedule in Major League Baseball through the back half of the year. Teams they're playing uh, collectively have a winning percentage of 537. The Indians have the third toughest. The White Sox wedged in between. And none of the clubs that you would consider to be serious contenders are in the top five. Kipnis with a two out base hit in the left field. Well, with a swing like that, you can tell why Jason Kipnis is an all star and also why he's hitting 322. I mean, there just aren't enough guys that'll do this type of swing at the plate. Most are up there trying to mash. Kipnis takes what the pitcher gives him and looks like a Pete Rose swing right there. One on, two out, and here is Lindor. He struck out looking his first time up. Strike one. Francisco brought up a little more than a month ago. Had spent the entire season in AAA Columbus. At the time of his promotion, he was eighth in the International League in hits, fourth in triples, can run a little bit. Well, they've got two young guys on the other on that left side of the infield. Lindor, who is from Puerto Rico, and Ursula, who is from the country of Colombia. And both of them have kind of rushed through the minor league. Maybe not Lindor as much because he's came with such publicity along the way. And being from Puerto Rico, he was drafted. Yeah. He was actually a first round draft pick by the Indians in 2011. Hamilton, short of the track, calls it in, and that will end the inning. It hit a man left. We're in the middle of the third. Hoping to avoid the rain. Reds with a 2 nothing lead.
can use hashtag Ohio data strong fan and you might end up in an upcoming telecast right here on Fox Sports Ohio. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. Three, four, five in the Reds batting order against Trevor Bauer batting in the third inning. The Reds scored twice in the second inning and that's our score to zip. Reds got a one out solo home run by Marlon Bird. Singles by Suarez and Barnhart and a suicide squeeze from the pitcher Mike Leake to score their two runs. This ball in the air right center field. Room for Moss. If a red were to reach that Toyota sign out in right center field tonight, Jeff Hendy from Harrison, Ohio, out west, will win this beautiful new Tundra. And you can register for your chance to win at an upcoming game to stop by your Cincinnati and or Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. That community has just exploded over the last 20 years or so. Harrison, Ohio. Well, that was nothing more than farmland. And that has turned into a beautiful area near the Indiana border. That one hooked into right field, base hit by Jay Bruce. One out single for the Reds right fielder. Take it out there and he pulls that outside pitch. It looks to me like Jay is not really concerned anymore with trying to take that pitch the other way and hit it against the shift. He's just getting up there and you know, see the ball hit the ball. I mean, when you're as big as strong and can hit it as far and as hard as Jay Bruce, why not? I mean, sometimes you can overcomplicate things. It's quite a nice block there by Jan Gomes preventing Bruce from advancing. Ball one to Marlon Bird. Never forget the words that uh, one of the former hitting coaches the Reds had, Jimmy Lefebvre. Really great guy and a very good hitting coach. He used to say, the better the hitter, the simpler the philosophy. Let me take an example of some guys who are, you know, backup players on the bench. He'd have to watch video of them and fine tune their swings every day. And on the other hand, he had Ken Griffey Jr. Center field base hit Marlon Bird two for two a home run now a single at junior he would say you know get up there see the ball and hit the ball let your talent take over not everybody's that good tonight Marlon is well we saw a couple of wicked cracks of uh, lightning beyond the right center field wall that drew the oohs and ahs from the crowd. You can see that lightning strike from the sky all the way down just beyond the initial hill looking into Kentucky. And thunder right on its heels. Two on for Suarez who singled and scored in the two run second inning. And another terrific block by Jan Gomes. Well, when you're catching Trevor Bauer and he's having a night like he is tonight, where not everything is coming out of his hand just right, when he's wild, he'll throw it right in front of the home plate. I mean, that's three feet in front of home plate right there. And that got Gomes on the right shoulder. No protection from where Jan Gomes just got hit. Then you come back with a fastball at 95 right down to can. Those are real good looking numbers with runners aboard for a Eugenio Suarez nearly a 375 batting one and two. I'm not so sure that Trevor Bowery even looks at Bruce at second base. He appears to be looking towards third. Maybe he sees him in his peripheral vision. But he never turns to look to second. 
Uh, that's the first time he's done it. Popped up short right field and Moss is there. For the second out of the inning Bruce and Bird stay put and here comes Tucker Barnhart if the Redster to add to this 2 nothing lead Tucker looking to drive in a run. Well, a big crowd tonight. There are already a lot of people that have moved out of their seats. It will be exposed to rain up under some some roofs and some dry area. That's yeah. over by the Fox Sports Ohio condominium. They're waiting for their man. Yes, they are. Their main man, Jim Day. Who I believe is already uh, dotting the rain gear down near the Reds dugout. Jim, is that you? Uh... No, it's not. Okay. Well, he comes prepared, Jim does. Sure does. Got the rain gear and the galoshes. And I got to tell you, there's a quick throw down to second base. Those galoshes he has are really nice. Yeah. I, I remember as a kid. Buying a pair of galoshes for Father's Day for my dad every year. He wore them all the time. Protect those shoes, you know, back in the day. You didn't. Sure. And uh, Jim Day's the same way. He keeps the shine on those shoes. Doesn't want to go around any of the mud and the bad water you get down there in that that camera well. I mean, they they really look nice. One ball and two strikes on Tucker Barnhart. You think the lightning and the thunder is a little bit distracting for the guys on the field? Well, I would think, don't you? I absolutely would think so. I mean, some people are a little more afraid of lightning than others. Yes. I mean, I know some people like to hide under the bed along with the pets. It's another area where you know really people aren't all that different from animals and, and so many things and you're right and that's precisely one area. Yeah. You know some dogs whatever nothing to it others it terrify people the same thing. Two balls and two strikes on Barnhart. And we'll do it again with two on and two out. Now, a lot of people in the diamond seats are. Hiding under the bed right now. Well, you know, if you have those Mercedes Benz Diamond Club seats, you know, when you walk back up underneath, you've got a pretty good setup now. You know I'm what not, I mean? I've not spent enough time in those seats to know. I've never been in them. They tell me they're great. 2 2 pitch. Fastball up and away, so the runners get started on a 3 2 count to Barnhart with two away in the inning. Pitch number 61 now coming up for Trevor Bauer. He's on the pace for one of those 100 pitch five inning games. 3 2 runners get started. Barnhart waiting. And he lost him after getting ahead. No balls and two strikes. Second walk given up by Bauer. Now he faces a pitcher, Mike Lee. For the first time, a light rain begins to fall. Reds in front, 2 0, batting in the bottom of the third inning. They're loaded with two away from Mike Leak. Liner into right center field. This will go all the way to the wall. One run scores. Two run score. A two run, two out double by Leak makes it 4 0 Reds. Uh, 
how Leak figured he had to get something over the plate and looking for a fastball, and he's just a ball player. I mean, a good hitter, that's a nice swing on a pitch down around the knees, and he finds the gap in right center field. And how to help yourself. And with that crack of the bat, the decision has been made that they're going to stop this game. Right now it's a very light rain, but apparently the heavy stuff is coming, so here we go again. The Reds have already piled up over a full day's worth of rain delays so far this season, meaning in terms of more than 25 hours. And we'll add to that right here and right now. Those folks out in California and in Arizona, oh, would they borrow so much of this rain that most of the rest of the country has had during this entire summer. I mean, the river here already looks like it's just about to go over the banks. It might not be, but well, they had to cancel sure the James like Taylor concert because of the uh, out of river bend. flooding down a river bend. And uh, by the way, I, I think I read where they're uh, rescheduling that for nine days from now. Wind's picking up a little bit, although it really isn't raining any harder now than when Mike Lee came to the plate. We'll have to see if the really nasty stuff, normally the, the grounds crew here, has done such an exceptional job all year long, on again, off again, on again, off again with the tarp. These guys have really, really worked hard this year. Not that they don't every year, but this year, I guarantee if you went down there and asked him, they'll say, for the guys that have been around for a while, this is by far the busiest. I mean, we're only in the middle of July. Well, you're right. And this is the the most straightforward thing they do. The other part, of course, is after it does rain, they have to prepare the field back to get a playable. You prepare it for batting practice. And then for the game after that, sometimes you, you prepare it two or three times a night. If guys come out here at 2.30 in the afternoon, they really, I'll tell you, their numbers are getting better and better. I mean, baseball is a game of numbers. Tonight, I got this ground crew covering the field in a minute 23. That's doing it. Not bad at all. That's doing it. So we're going to take a timeout and we'll be back in a moment. Reds in front here in the third inning, still batting for nothing. You're watching Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio.
to the Milwaukee Brewers. Had the Brewers not made the playoffs, Michael Brantley was one of those players that the only reason his name became available and he became available was because the Brewers did make the playoffs. That was some of the language that was in that trade involving C.C. Sabathia. If you take Brantley out of that deal, that trade is a disaster for the Cleveland Indians, and the same holds true for the trade when they dealt away Cliff Lee, mm -hmm. where they got next to nothing in return, and how those two deals, one of them, they fell into a pot of luck on getting Brantley because the rest of those players, a big one you may remember at the time, the most highly rated prospect in all of baseball was Matt Laporta. Yeah. Never turned out to be anything at the big league level. And then in the Lee deal, Zippo. Well, they didn't give up much to get Lee in the first place. Remember, that was a huge trade that included Brandon Phillips. So they kind of had Lee fall into their laps. Now, obviously, when he becomes a premier pitcher, you want to get some good value for him. That's just that's the crapshoot that's out there. You know, for a team that trades a can't miss veteran player like a Johnny Cueto or in this case even Mike Leake and you're getting prospects in return. You know you're keeping your fingers crossed that those guys stay healthy and that at least one or two depending on how many you get turn out to be as good as the guy that you traded away. And certainly this is where the baseball operations people will earn their paychecks because like you said you can't be too quick to judge the trade. But my oh my, you're certainly hoping when you have those chips to trade, if indeed that's the direction the Reds elect to go. And you, you really have, can't miss. And I think, Tom, the other thing and it's very difficult to do is to remove the emotion from the trade. Because the players that you're talking about here, we're talking about Mike Leake, we're talking about Johnny Cueto in the past. I mean, if they trade some other guys that are here, chances are they've come up through the Reds farm system, drafted, you know polished as minor leaguers you come up to the big leagues you remember their debut you know they've represented the team in all-star games and now you're trading them away so it's it's difficult to do that for an organization to say goodbye to one of your own and it's very hard to take the emotion out of it but sometimes that's what you have to do to make the organization better we will take a break when we come back we're back to baseball just moments away from resuming this one the Reds and the Indians Reds lead four nothing in the third back in a moment.
Base here in the third, and they're still batting. Billy Hamilton coming up. And when play resumes momentarily, Tucker Barnhart will be the runner at third. Mike Leak at second. And you take a look head to head. Uh, home is indeed the place to be. Indians have beaten the Reds in Cleveland. 13 of the last 14, including that three game series sweep over Memorial Day weekend. And here at Great American Ballpark, we told you the Reds have won eight in a row over Cleveland. 16 of the last 20. And the home team leads tonight. We're ready to go. Bauer needs one more out to complete this third inning. That rain delay probably came at a good time for Trevor Bauer because things are really going south for him. He had loaded the bases with a, a 3 2 walk to Barnhart. That was followed by a first pitch double in the gap by Mike Leak. Drove in a couple of runs. And Bauer was having a hard time finding the strike zone, his release point. He was bouncing balls four feet in front of home plate. To give him a little bit of rest, and we'll find out what happens to him. Billy Hamilton put down a sacrifice his first time up. And he bunts or he bats with runners at second and third as we're back to baseball. Here at 917 Eastern Time, and we're only in the third inning. First pitch swinging Hamilton in the air, foul ground. And running out of room, and both the Indian youngsters on that left side, Urshela and Lindor, chopped in half over there by the railing. Boy, Urshela took a big time. Boy, they, they, they both did, really, and Urshela never really saw that fence coming up on him. And it was at least two rows deeper than where they were able to reach. And they've got the team made. They don't need to dive into the seats right now. One and one on Billy Hamilton. Well, they're very high on Urshela. We mentioned earlier about his defense. We were talking with a long time great radio voice of the Cleveland Indians, one of our favorite guys in all of baseball, Tom Hamilton. And they believe Urshela will win a number of gold gloves for his defense at third in years to come. 1-1 one, one delivery to Billy. Shallow setting. Brantley coming in to get it, and the Reds are finished in the third. We go to the fourth. Reds in front of Cleveland, 4-0. When he gets five days or more of rest, Chris Welsh, take a look at some of those numbers as opposed to 
his 10 starts on four days rest. Well, he is working on six days right now, so that may be a good indication of what we're expecting to see here the rest of the night. Eight starts on five plus days are under an average in the twos. Yeah, he pitched one week ago tonight in Miami and was so terrific in that one nothing Reds win. That would be the only win for the Reds in that three game series against the Marlins. Three point five for the Indians here in the fourth inning Bradley Murphy and Santana. League is allowed two hits going to work first pitch swinging Brantley who walked his first time up is down a strike. Well, you can break Mike Leake's season down month by month and he got off to a pretty good just from an earned run standpoint good April horrible May and a pretty good June and an excellent July so far. When he's on he makes it look awfully easy. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, lots of ground balls, and you're off the field in no time. You know what he has to protect against right now, though, is he probably knows there's more rain coming. They predict more some coming. And try to slow himself down because he can't rush and expect to get those five innings in just because he wants to. He's got to find his normal pace and pitch his normal game. But be aggressive. Well, you saw him take a big deep breath right there after falling behind Brantley. Three balls and a strike. And now leaked to the plate. And it's pulled foul. A full count on the Cleveland center fielder. Well, both pitches that Brantley has gone after this have happened down low. He looks like he just wants that ball down in the bottom of the zone. Now the Reds put on the big shift against Brantley on a two strike pitch and he lays into one to deep right center field but the weather is cooled off substantially and you wonder after that rain if maybe some of that humidity wasn't all of a sudden wiped out of the air because Hamilton caught that one up against the wall. Yeah, you would think that before the rain came through here this ball would have drifted into the seats now hit to deep part of the ballpark. Mike Leake has seen enough of those to know that you better hold your breath. So one away in the inning and here comes David Murphy. He grounded out to Brandon Phillips ending the first inning and there's ball one up and away. Red scored a pair of runs in the second inning. Home run by Marlon Bird a suicide squeeze put down by Leake. Leake has knocked in three of the four Reds runs tonight because he added a two run double with two away in the two run third inning. Cardinals and the Mets. That's a good series to begin the second half. That's at Bush Stadium tonight. And the Mets with a one nothing lead over St. Louis. That game in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cubs and the Braves are tied at two in the fifth. And Milwaukee a one nothing fifth inning lead at home over the Pirates. Still two and two on David Murphy. That Cardinal game with the Mets is Lance Lynn and Noah Syndergaard. Syndergaard was a right hander that just put it to the Reds, throwing about 100 miles an hour. And I, I saw the comments made by John Smoltz. You may have seen the same word. He believes this Mets staff can be better than the rotation which John Smoltz pitched in with Atlanta when they had Hall of Famers Greg Maddox and Tom Glavitt. That's saying a lot. Ground ball to third. And that's a second out here in the fourth inning. Hey, Boy, is that up. really saying a lot? You're right. I mean, that is really saying something for a guy who I think you and I both agree. Eh? He is a sharp guy. Talk about Smoltz. He's a good guy. He's a grounded guy. He didn't walk around. I'm a Hall of Fame guy. Act like a big leaguer all the time. For him to come out and say that, he must really feel these Mets are something else. Well, they do have some special arms. Uh, I mean, just from a physical standpoint and the potential, I think that's what he's talking about. And he knows his pitching, John Smoltz does. So 
Santana hooked one in between Brandon Phillips and Joey Votto for a base hit his first time up. Nice breaking ball there. It's one and one on Carlos Santana. Really, that base hit by Santana was the only time the red shift defense did not work. This one hit right at Suarez. That's the shortstop. And a one, two, three, fourth after the break by Mike Leak. Reds will bat in the bottom of the inning, leading for nothing. My local Ford dealer, Ford, go further by Meyer. Find more for a healthier you at Meyer. Fan by Cincinnati Children's, ranking third in the country on the U.S. News and World Report's best children's hospitals in America. And we welcome those of you watching from over at Cincinnati Children's. As always, we hope you're having a, a great day today and a better one tomorrow. Top of the order for the Reds against Trevor Bauer and the Reds four runs six hits Cleveland shut out by Mike Leak on two hits. Brandon 0 for one has popped up and drawn a walk. First pitch fastball up around the chin and got Brandon to get out of the batter's box. He actually am not really permitted to leave the batter's box unless you swing or foul the ball off. I think he asked permission of Jeff Kellogg before he went out. And then he gets sees a slider on the next pitch. He looks a little frustrated. The power keeps coming in there. Up and in again. Three balls and a strike. Off the glove of Bauer and ricochets to the second baseman Kipnis, and that's the way things start here in the Reds' fourth inning.
Joey Votto over two is struck out twice. And he's down strike one against Bauer here with one out in the fourth. If you're just tuning in, Reds scored two in the second, two in the third. We had a rain delay in the bottom of the third while the Reds were batting. And the grounds crew did a marvelous job of getting the field prepared quickly, knowing that at least on the radar, there's a chance for further rain tonight and trying to get back and get as many innings as possible as quickly as possible on the books. Two and one to Botto. Foot in the box, a right foot ahead in the count, three balls and a strike. Frazier waits on deck. Straight away center field, hit a ton by Votto. Brantley will watch it fly. Home run. Number 16 for Joey Votto and the Reds stretch their lead to five nothing. Now he thought he had it but he wasn't sure especially after seeing the one that was caught at the warning track by Billy Hamilton in the last inning. That by Michael Brantley but Joey Votto's got plenty to hit it on that green berm. Out of his first home run since he hit one in Washington in that five nothing Reds win. And you may remember the one he hit in Washington was his first one in uh, nearly a month. Silvato so getting the home run to make it a five nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That was a night the Reds jumped all over Max Scherzer. Yeah. Fisher chases that pitch in the dirt and he's out on strikes two away. Four strikeouts for Bauer. Uh, he had a figure he's going to get a fastball. Botto did. And one thing about Botto's swing is that he hits the ball so deep, meaning it is so close to the catcher. And a lot of his home runs go to left to left center field. That one's straight away center field for the, the long ball. Of course, knowing Joey Votto, he didn't take three days. He was not involved in any of the All-Star activities. Mm -hmm. But he didn't take three days off of hitting, do you think? I mean, he probably has a batting cage at his house. He's just not the kind of guy to sit around and not hit. No. Jay Bruce is struck out and he started the two run rally with a one out single to right field in the third inning. Gone swinging and that'll retire the side. So Leak will get the ball in the fifth inning and his lead is five nothing. Votto plays long ball for the 16th time.
Offer you a great value this season. It's called the Kroger Meal Deal, all for $9 if you check concession stands around the ballpark. It includes a hot dog, a bag of chips, a 16-ounce Coke, and during this homestand, Jack Link's original flavor beef jerky. All that for $9, a Kroger meal deal here at the ballpark. Five runs, seven hits for the Reds. No runs, two hits for the Indians. Battle for the Ohio Cup. The Indians already up three games to none, so just to split the Ohio Cup, the Reds need the weekend sweep. Where they have beaten the Indians eight consecutive times here at Great American Ballpark. Frazier, a nice pick to the backhand side. And the throw is high. As soon as it left his hands, you knew it was too high, and Gomes reaches safely. Kind of a bittersweet error right there. You make a dandy defensive play just to put the grab on it, and then you throw it away. The ironic thing is, is that the result is the same. If Frazier doesn't glove that ball, say he deflects it and it goes down the left field line, Gomes ends up on second base with a double. He still ends up on second base, but there they are on the throw. All right, so leadoff man aboard, and here's your number seven hitter, Brandon Moss. Rochella waits on deck, then you get to the pitcher spot. Reds already with a 5 0 lead, and there's a pop up. It appears to be playable for Frazier and is one out. Michael Bourne has moved into the on deck circle. One out, one on. Urshela struck out swinging his first time up. His only time up. Leak is fan two, walked one through the front four and a third innings. Shella made his major league debut on the 9th of June after being brought up from Triple A. Now he played 21 games there. His season did not start until the end of April. He missed all the spring with lower back problems and went on the DL again with further back problems through the month of May. Well, he's been a young man that the Indians have really pushed through their organization ever since they signed him in the, as a, I think, a 16-year-old out of. Cartagena, Colombia. He's a big guy. He's six feet, about 215 pounds, and at 23 years old, you got to figure he's going to fill out even more. They love his defense. He has a certain calmness about him when he plays D. And they figure that he can hit. But he's always been a player that throughout the minor leagues has played two years younger, or about two years younger, than everybody else in the same league. Pulled by that pitch and pops it up to the right side and foul territory for Votto. And after reaching second on the air by Frazier to start the inning, Gomes is still standing at second now with two outs. And here comes Michael Bourne. A hey, reminder coming up later, we'll have our Miller Time Moment brought to you by Miller Light. Now a visit to the mound by pitching coach Jeff Pico. What did we ever do before the pitching coach was there to run a scouting report out? Well, you tell me. I mean, when you were in pitchers' meetings, you know, before a game, and you'd go over the hitters, would you go over guys on the bench as well? Well, yeah, a little bit. But, you know, by the time you got down to the bench players, it was hard stuff in, soft stuff away. Hard stuff up in the zone, soft stuff down the zone. And you really want to know whether the guy was a first pitch fastball hitter or not. Beyond that, believe me, the same pitches get guys out. 
on the knees on the corner. That's usually a good spot to go. Especially a guy hitting 222. Of course, Bourne has had a, a good career. He has. So he's been a good player for a number of years. Leads all major league players in stolen bases nearly 300 since 2008. First two seasons with the Indians, though, three trips to the disabled list. It's always been a good bunter, very hard to strike out. But he has just not been the same player this year that he has been through most of his major league career. And the injury that he has had is a left hamstring injury. And of course, Warren's game is speed. And when you have a leg injury like that, you take your solid base as a hitter out from under you. You don't use the speed that you have and that you've been God given. And it really takes your game away. You know, you really look at, at, at Bourne, his career on base percentage is only 333. That is not very good at all for a guy who makes his living, as you mentioned, Chris, with the legs and taking a stolen base, and yet he's hitting 222 on the year, and Mike Leake just walked him to face the best hitter in the Cleveland lineup by far. Not even close. You know, I'm convinced sometimes that, especially in those pitchers' meetings, when you go over the opposition that you tend to glorify the hitters too much and give them too much credit. Getting too specific with the scouting report. Well now you're facing a batter who's hitting over a hundred points higher than the guy you just walked. And it's strike one on the inside corner to Kipnis, who's one of two. He's bounced a second and single to left feet. He's been in town long enough to fill out a residency form. Well, the good news is for him, he probably jumped in the car after the game on Tuesday night and drove home. Two on, two out, 0 oh and 2 to count on Jason Kipnis. And a fly ball in the left field, so Leak takes care of him on three pitches, and that's all for the Indians. Leak pitches around an air and a walk. Middle of the 10th, Reds in front, 5 0.
live baseball at bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay, reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat, your smartphone or your tablet. I'm Jim Day. You heard Tom and Chris talk about the countless hours put in by the Red staff and everyone involved in Cincinnati with the All-Star Game. Now, once the game arrived here in those couple of days, I'm not sure anyone worked harder than Rick Stowe and his equipment staff in both the home clubhouse and the visiting clubhouse. At one point, they worked 5 a.m. to 3 a.m. That was this past Monday, getting ready for the game. Now, every equipment manufacturer, because there are no restrictions to the All-Star Game, they all sent crates of stuff. There was just drinks everywhere, beverages everywhere. They had to have food around the clock. The players' equipment, which were different from each team, different uniforms, different hats. It was an unbelievable undertaking. In fact, at one point, three or four of them just had cots in the clubhouse, and they just slept here because there was so much to be done. And then after the game, they had to box up all the players' stuff to be authenticated, to sent, be sent home, to be sent to each respective cities. And you would go in there in the clubhouse today and you would notice that anything happened. So a terrific job by Rick Stowe, Mark Stowe, and their staff. Well, what a first game back after the All-Star break for Marlon Bird. A home run, a single, and now a sliding double in Marlon. Three out of three tonight. There were a lot of people that thought that Marlon Bird came back way too soon after a fractured wrist. But he came back and hit a home run. I think it was first or second game back, and he comes out tonight. I mean, every time he stepped to the plate, it's a hard hit ball. For Bird, his second three hit game as a red. Bear in mind for Bird, we are only in the bottom of the fifth inning. Reds already with eight hits in a game. Indians, of course, a pinch hit for Trevor Bowen. So now the new pitcher coming on is Jeff Manship, right hander out of the Indians bullpen. And he's fallen behind Suarez at three balls and no strikes. Six game, eight innings. Very good numbers so far for Manship. Just brought up on June the 18th, was in Columbus and having an excellent year there. Well, Manship uh, average at 1.9. Pardon me. No, he, he, was, he was a guy, Tom, that had quite a few years in with the Minnesota Twins and looking for a job over the winter. He ended up signing a minor league deal with the Indians, went to camp with them. We saw him down in Goodyear. And they just called him up in around the end of June, third week in June. In the hole at short, the lead door. Pretty nifty pickup and throws in time, and the runner stays put. Those are some of the little things that Brian Price is certainly going to keep an eye out on. That's not every single at bat and placing a ton of judgment or, you know, stock in every single at bat. And knowing the way the lineup shakes down tonight, you have Barnhart coming up and then the pitcher spot, although we know Leak is more than capable of knocking in a run. He has three of them tonight. But Brian Price uh, commented numerous times in some of the small things he's just not been happy with his club at all. And whether that's a leadoff double and finding a way to get that runner down to third or a ground out or a fly ball can play you another run. Whether it's base running. The defense from time to time which has not been nearly as airtight so far this year as we've seen over the last number of years where the Reds have been among the very best in all the baseball. Those are some of the things that. That Brian Price reminded his team after the game on Sunday, he fully expected everybody to be back here to play better baseball in the back half of the year than it played in the front half. 
And there was a lengthy closed door meeting after the final game on Sunday in Miami. Two away in the inning. Uh, the last two games the Reds played in Miami were not good. I mean, they were on the verge of being humiliated there. They, they delay lacked any kind of pizzazz or any 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 kind of energy. It seemed like and they got down early. And a lot of things are going to Marlins way and all that. And when you don't hit, you don't look like you're trying. But I can see why he had that meeting. But it, it's interesting though, Tom. All Star Week. I got to talk to a lot of veteran all stars and some guys in the big red machine and it shouldn't be the manager that you're afraid to see after you don't do the little things it should be your teammates. Well lead off double and bird never moves three in a row tied by Manship we're off to the sixth Reds lead the Indians five nothing. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Well, tonight, Reds fans from the Northeast Welcomers rode the Fan Express to Gator Married American Ballpark to root on the Reds in this Buckeye State Showdown. Dates are really going quickly. You still have a shot depending on what day you're looking for. Give them a ring. 513-765-7600 and reserve a game for your group coming to Great American Ballpark. Through five, five runs, eight hits for the Reds. No runs, two hits for the Cleveland Indians. Likely coming off a game where he was masterful in a one nothing shutout win over the Marlins from Miami. He went eight, allowed three hits, no runs, struck out ten. Chapman came in to pick up the save in that one. Lindor, Brantley, Murphy, the trio for Terry Francona's Indians. Dora base hit in the center field is first hit in three at bats tonight.
Uh, Lindor's never been a guy, at least in the minor leagues, afraid to run. The problem is, as he's gone up the minor league ladder and the catching gets better and the arms are better, he gets thrown out nearly as many times as he is successful. This year at AAA, he had nine stolen bases when he was down in, in Columbus. In the International League, that for the Columbus Clippers, and he was out of those nine successful, he was thrown out seven times. Of course, five runs down, he's not a candidate to go here anyway. But you would like to keep him close for a double play ball. One and two on Michael Brantley. Two and two to Bradley, and Lee continues to keep a eye on Lee Dora over there. First base held on by Votto. Bradley has drawn a walk and flied out to deep center field. Hammered in a right. Lee Dora advancing on to third. Bruce slides to cut it off. Fires to the cutoff man, Phillips. And the Indians starting to make a little noise down five nothing here in the sixth, second and third and none out. Boy, is that a quick bat by Michael Brantley or what? I mean, he almost lulls you to sleep with the play because he's very still. Look how still he is. He plants that foot in plenty of time. And I mean, that ball and that swing is just short and right to the point. Yeah, that's a swing that you like to teach every young man coming up in baseball. But you just can't do it. I mean, he has just got that gifted ability to be able to to rip that bat through the zone that quick. And Murphy on the very first pitch pops up a breaking ball to the left side of the infield, and that's out number one. It's a big old thank you there. Now the switch hitting Carlos Santana who ripped a single in the right field in the second inning grounded out to the shortstop in the fourth. And the Reds will once more move their defenders around on the infield. Sending Suarez Phillips and Votto all three between the first and second base bags. Very light rain begins to fall. We talked about the front behind the one which led to the stoppage in play that was making its way from the northwest through Indianapolis down towards the greater Cincinnati area. Pull foul. Not only rain, but lightning and thunder. Mercy. That's not fooling around there. Well, you got to figure that the umpires are torn right here because lightning, that seemed like it was fairly close. But there's not a drop of rain falling. 
And they're looking in the dugout for maybe some radar help. It's hard to believe that pitch did not hit the batting, but it did not. One and two on Santana. And what a block by Barnhart. Oh, you're not kidding. One ball and two strikes. The Reds infield obviously conceding the run with a 5 nothing lead here in the sixth inning. Two on, one out. Pulled foul. Good pitch. Reds have action in their bullpen. Right hander Ryan Matthews is up and throwing. Now the one two again and a bouncing ball. It should be the second out of the inning and it is the Indians will score their first run of the game. Scoring from third is Lean Door but they're two away and advancing second to third is Brantley. Five one our score. That ends a scoreless inning streak for Mike Leak at 14. He has a four run lead. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Runner at third, two outs. Jan Gomes behind a strike. It is amazing after that earlier rain we had and a little bit of rain that is falling now how dramatically the temperature has dropped. It was a very muggy hot day today. Fly ball to center and that'll end the inning. So not bad work at all by Lake after second and third and nobody out. He only gives up a run. Calf Gold Cup sponsored by Chevrolet begin as Clint Dempsey and the United States continue their quest for a second consecutive Gold Club title. They'll take on Cuba. And our coverage begins at 4:30 Eastern on your local Fox station. That's channel 19 WXIX here in the greater Cincinnati area. And of course, it's always streaming live on Fox Sports Go. That's tomorrow at 4:30. Manship is second inning aboard. Light rain continuing to fall. Reds with a five to one lead batting in the last of the sixth inning. We have an official game in the book. Should this rain and or the lightning strike again.
A reminder tomorrow night's game is on Fox Sports 1. And that will be Anthony DiSclefani against the reigning American League Cy Young Award winner. That one hooked to the right side and Hamilton thrown out. That's Corey Kluber. Kluber with an ERA of 3.3, but has lost 10 games. And then we're coming back your way. Reds live on Sunday. Our game coverage gets underway at 1 o'clock. Johnny Cueto against Carlos Carrasco. And of course, he. Cubbies come to town. 9 game Monday, 9 game Tuesday, a split day night doubleheader on Wednesday. We'll have all the night games for you right here on Fox Sports Ohio. We will not have the 12:35 game. Wednesday afternoon. The second game starts a little bit earlier, so for those of you getting home from work on Wednesday, we'll probably be already on the air. Game time is 6 10 Wednesday night. Snuggle up next to your favorite gal and enjoy the action. There you go. Brandon gone on strikes, and that's out number two here in the red six inning. Well, get ready for Reds action 30 minutes before the start of every game. We call it Reds Live. It's presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. And again, our next game and Reds Live will start at 12.30 Sunday. Joey struck out his first two times up against Trevor Bauer, but had the last laugh with a blast to center field, a home run, his 16th of the year in the fourth inning. It's a pretty nice comeback action on that fastball. in the last I want to say three weeks to a month that there are teams that are pitching Joey Votto differently than they did in the first part of the year. I mean they're really coming inside to him now where before they would pitch him like you would normally a left handed hitter you pitch him in at first and then you pitch him away and he would rifle that ball down the left field line and got off to a very good start of the season because of that. And until he does what he did against Bauer on that fastball that he took to center field. Pitchers will stay with that same strategy. I mean, you've got advanced scouts here, and they're writing it all down, and they're watching on on video. Coming back in there again, and the inning is over. Reds gone in order. We move two to seven. Reds five. The Indians one.
Mike Leak right from the get go picking him up and mowing him down. Only one run allowed so far for Leak through the front six and at the plate ho hum a suicide squeeze to bring in a run in the two run second and with the bases loaded and two outs in the third shot one to right center field one hopping off the wall and driving in a pair Leak three runs batted in of the five the Reds have scored also RBIs tonight solo home run by Marlon Bird a solo home run by Joey Votto and the night is over for Mike Lee he started the game we had the rain delay the lightning delay came back and threw three very effective innings allowing just the one run in six and now Brian Price will hand it over to the right hander Ryan Matthews. Now they walked a couple Mike Leak did it was not a high strikeout night for him. He had 10 in his last outing Leak did when he pitched against the Marlins had two tonight. And Ryan Matthews game number 25 now for Matthews. He pitched one game with the Angels before being placed on waivers and that's when the Reds picked him up. So he's been a big part of this bullpen. Now the rain steady but still very light as the Indians start with Brandon Moss 7 8 and 9 here in the seventh inning Moss over two is bounced into a double play and fouled out to Frazier at third. Rochella next and then a pinch hitter. No doubt for Manship. Manship did a nice job two innings one hit. Two strikeouts no walks no runs. You know, those that are following the Indians are asking the same type of questions that the Reds fans are. So, all right, what, what are the Indians going to do with the trading deadline? I mean, they're 11 games back in the division, five and a half back in the wild card with a bunch of teams ahead of them. And one of the guys that they don't have as many pieces to deal as do the Reds, but one guy that they may deal would be the guy that just flew out to left field there is. That is put away for the first out is Brandon Moss. I mean, he's been all over the place. Pitch, played a couple of years in Boston, Pittsburgh, a few years, the last three years at Oakland before coming over here this year with the, the Indians. And he provides a little pop. He's got 14 home runs. Got to keep your eye on, him, certainly. And you know, uh, the, the, the one thing, the one area. Shared by the Indians and the Reds is both of them feel very good moving forward with their stable of young pitchers. This is still a very young Cleveland starting rotation, which has had an excellent year. I mean, their starters have a combined ERA on the year in 3.5. So, you know, Kluber's not an old guy by any stretch of the imagination, and Carrasco, and talk about Bauer, and the rest of the guys. Uh, Filling in that starting rotation, they feel pretty good. But you know, like the Reds, as we talked about very early on, runs have been tough to come by. Salazar and Anderson, the other starters in that rotation. And I don't know what happened here. Did the umpire get hit? Also got him right on the elbow. Uh, we were kind of shielded by him. You can see by his reaction. Farmer must have heard it and then heard him. Paul Asoy, the head trainer of the Reds, comes out. Of course, he was a trainer for the All Star team, National League All Star team. And uh, Jeff Kellogg says, Thank you. Let's get going. Hopefully, he's okay. And <laughs> it's got to hurt. God, are you kidding? They say don't rub it, but I'd be rubbing the heck out of it. 
I, tell you, I, don't, I don't think enough credit is given uh, oftentimes and you know the easiest thing in the world to do is make jokes about umpires and you know this and that and everything else and we all have fun tongue in cheek about it but these are tough men and these are grown men. These are guys in their 40s 50s sometimes 60s. You're out there especially behind the plate. Well first of all you're out there standing. For three hours minimum. Sometimes the games go. Just as long as can be we're sitting up here and kind of. Looking at each other oh, sure but I mean these guys are out there just they, they never sit down not even once. And rarely even do you see them. Have a, a bottle of water being run out to him. That one got away from Barnhart and reaching safely is Rochella. So he's aboard with one out in the inning. It's ruled a wild pitch. Got to be blocked, especially for strike three. Ryan Rayburn comes up to pinch hit for Manship. One on, one out, and this should. And oh, they can't get rid of it in enough time. That would have been a double play ball, but Suarez couldn't find the handle. So two are out in the inning. Well, better to take your time and make sure you get one right here than try to rush your throw if you don't have a good grip on it. He keeps reaching into that glove until he finds a grip and still gets a lead man. That would have been a tough double play. Mm -hmm. So now Kipnis, he bats for the fourth time in the game. Is grounded a second, single to left, fly out to center, stranding two in the fifth inning. That was a big out for Mike Leak, you may remember. He walked the pinch hitter Michael Bourne to put a second runner aboard after Gomes had reached to begin the inning on an error. But Leak retired Kipnis on three pitches, got ahead 0-2 and got him on a pop-up to left field to end the inning. One and one on Jason Kipnis. Strike. And a fastball is in there at 95 miles per hour. Strike two call. Raining a little harder now. But if it continues to rain like it's raining right now, it looks like this umpiring crew is more than content to continue to play this game unless we were to see some more lightning. Kipnis lifts one into left field and once more it's caught by Marlon Bird. They stand and stretch at Great American Ballpark in the rain. Reds five, Indians one.
We remind you, you can make Great American Ballpark your family day destination this Sunday, every Sunday, part of Family Sundays. Kids 14 and younger receive a Devin Mezzarocco poster presented by College Advantage. And take advantage of some great family ticket offers. And they are out there, believe me. We have live mascot races, face painters, games, and more. 381 REDS, the number to call for tickets or log on to Reds.com slash tickets. Now raining even a little harder now, and many in the stands. A crowd of almost 39,000 on this Friday night looking for cover. Indians bring on their third pitcher of the night. It's right-hander Austin Adams. Strike one to Todd Frazier. Adams just the 12th game of the year. Young man that was drafted in 2009, fifth round by the Indians from Faulkner University. Frazier a hot smash to the glove side of Lee Door. Where is Faulkner? You know what? I was going to buy you, uh, offer to buy you an iced tea if you could tell me where Faulkner University is. Just tell me the state you think it is. Yeah. I, I have no idea. Be in Alabama. How about that? Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. And you thought you knew them all. No, I definitely don't know them all, especially uh, when you start reading about some of the ones where some of these baseball players come from. You know, every now and again, you'll get tripped up maybe on a guy from the NFL, but you're so used to watching those guys playing college. But man, some of the guys in baseball. Very interesting stuff where they come from. That's why you have those bird dog scouts just about no doubt in every county in America. You know, if you're a supervisor scout or a cross checker or a guy in charge of a certain area, it's your job not only to scout the players, but also to scout the scouts so that you can have a, you know, a bird dog here and a bird dog there. And a young kid comes up from Faulkner University that no one knows about. You may get him and before somebody else does. It is a uh, Christian University is Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama. They have uh, 3,500 students, 2,200 of which are undergraduates. Well, I tell you, some of the pictures of this place look uh, beautiful. Well, he was drafted twice. Austin Adams was. First time he was drafted, he was in at a, at a different college, Faulkner State College, in Bay Minette. Alabama and he went to Faulkner University from there. You think I'm making this up? Faulkner State. Yeah. Okay. That's your next assignment. It is. I'll be on it. Faulkner State. First few years in the minor leagues, he was a starter, then converted to a reliever in 2013. Two and two on Marlon Bird has had a terrific night. A perfect three out of three, a home run in the second inning, a single scored a run in the third, and doubled off the right center field wall in the fifth. Second time Bird has had three hits in a game as a red. And now going for four. And he'll get it. That'll be scored a base hit. A four hit night tonight for Marlon Bird. I'll tell you, tonight it, it is almost impossible to throw too hard for Marlon Bird not to get the sweet part of the bat on it. I mean, Austin Adams is dialing it up there at 98. That last pitch, 97. That goes off the glove of Lindor.
I'm not sure what Marlon did during the All-Star break, but he came back ready to swing the bat. And just do it again tonight when you go home, whatever it is. Eugenio Suarez, one of three, is singled and scored. Man, oh man, is this guy rushing up there? Oh, you're not kidding. They have to go start scouting both Faulkner State and Faulkner University more frequently. Oh, Doctor. That's something in at 97. Well, actually, Austin Adams is the third major leaguer to come through Austin, uh, Faulkner University. Shane Reynolds, 13 How about that? Major he had a right hand pitcher. Career. Really good career. And Steve Sparks. He had a good career. Well, Shane Reynolds had an outstanding career. Sure did. Shane was, uh, you know, depending on the year, the number one, the number two starter for all those seasons for the Houston Astros. They were still playing most of those years in the Astrodome before Minute Maid Park came along. What, 114 games in the major yeah. leagues? He was a good one. 19 game winner, 1998, led the league and league, uh, game started. I imagine if you go to Faulkner University, you are well scouted. Runner takes off and no throw. Marlon Bird gets just his second stolen base of the season. Up ball four. Well, I'll make a fight. Late call there by Jeff Kellogg, but I stand corrected. So Suarez draws a walk after a two out single by Marlon, and here comes Tucker Barnhart. Begin to, I guess, be a little bit more consistent now. Yeah. Not harder necessarily, but I got to ask you a question. Are you an umbrella guy or a poncho guy? I'm really neither one. I, I, I you know, you just don't like the rain. No, 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 no. I don't mind the rain. I mean, you know, there are a lot of good things that come about from the rain. But, you know, now look, if I'm going to go to like you know one of our kids, uh, you know, a football game or a sure. soccer game or something like that, and you know you're going to be standing outside for an hour and a half, all right, then I'll get the umbrella. But you know, as far as running in and out and worried about getting wet, I don't, I don't worry much about it. What about you? Oh, I'm a, I'm kind of a poncho. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, but my wife is is definitely uh, on the poncho side. She got everybody loaded up. Brought it all down here for the all-star game of the kids, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. I did too. I had a backpack just cramped with it all. What kind of guy is Jim Day? I would imagine he's kind of a, a poncho yeah. rain suit guy. I mean, he's got the galoshes. There's your giveaway. Yeah, I think you're right. That ain't Jim Day is a poncho guy. Is Jim anywhere to be found? Can he join in on this conversation or is he not down by the dugout? I don't think he is. I'm a poncho Kemp? guy. <laughs> As Jared Nair would say, I'm a mudder, mudder guy. <laughs> did you did you say a mudder? Like you get muddy, is that what you're saying? Well, you gotta have some mudders here in the Midwest. Play a lot in the rain, you know, you gotta have a mudder. <laughs> Jim, are you a, you look like a roof guy to me. I am right like, now, I am a roof guy. The roof guy. There's a little ledge right here that I am on the stairway that I am hogging. But next half inning, I'll be standing in the elements. Okay. Delivering some pertinent information. Yeah, I have no doubt about that. Well, where's that all that fancy uh, rain gear that you were given by Fox Sports? Oh, oh, it's down here. I'll be putting it on here in just a moment. You got the galoshes going? I do, in fact. Good for you. I was amazed how nice those things are when you showed me uh, on the last road trip. Those things are sweet. Well, I don't know. They're, I think they're, they look great. They're br black, but I don't know if they look great with brown shoes. Oh, I mean, you can't tell. You, you and I talked about oh, that. You, you really got to look close. Yeah. 
you know, you're not wearing those pants like, you know, they're, I, I guess, in style. I mean, I not much I style. wear is in style at all. But I mean, those ones that, you know, like a lot of the young young guys are wearing now that come down like four inches too short. And yeah, with like no wrap socks. Around your ankle, you know? No socks and dress shoes. Yeah. Well, that's so you can show your shoes off. I mean, if you're buying or wearing Christian Louboutin, I mean, you got to show your shoes off. You don't want to cover them up with your pants. Yeah, but, it, but there aren't a lot of young guys that are buying those shoes. Well, well if they have numbers on their back, well, they, yeah, that's they can afford it. Here's ball four, and they are loaded for the pinch hitter, Skip Schumacher. He'll bat for Ryan Matthews. Yeah, I get the feeling that the Reds are willing to get up there and swing the bat. I mean, after all, Frazier went after the first pitch. Bruce went after the first pitch. Bird was up there hacking hard at just about anything that came by. But if it's nowhere near the zone, you're not going to offer at it. Well, here comes Terry Francona. His team is still in this game. They're within quote unquote slam range, but after back to back walks to Suarez and Barnhart, he will summon one would assume a left handed from his bullpen to face the announced pinch hitter in Skip Schumacher. Skip Schumacher, bases loaded. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. And the Reds with a 5-1 to one lead and trying to really bust this thing wide open. Schumacher has been among the very best, if not quite honestly, the best pinch hitter in baseball so far this year. He has the most hits. Brock it up and down three different times so far this year. And it is 2 and 0. Oh. Well, this started after two were out. Bird single. And he's walked to second, walked to third after walks to Suarez and a walk to Barnard. Schumacher looking for something to hammer right here and right now on 2 and 0. Oh. And a dribbler down to first. And that will end the inning. Reds leave them loaded. We go to the eighth. Rain continues to fall. Reds lead 5-1.
photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Ohio Data Strong Fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast is brought to you by T-Mobile. I'm Jim Day, Poncho Guy. Brian Price, he came off the All-Star game with a tremendous experience. He was on the coaching staff of Bruce Bochy on the National League team, and he's a Bay Area, California guy, so it, he was thrilled when he saw Willie Mays appear as one of the franchise four, one of the all-time franchise four. That was a thrill for him. Also, he said it was a thrill to just watch Bruce Bochy in action, one of the masters of the game, obviously. And he said Bochy had a complete game plan. He wasn't blowing that thing off at all. In fact, he had a meeting before the game with the National League and said, I don't like to lose at anything. I want to win this game. He had a game plan in hand. And he said it was uh, nice to just watch a master at work. And Brian Bryce even had to give up his office for Mr. Bruce Bochy, which he gladly did for the game. And now he's back in there to manage the Reds in the second half. All righty, Jim Day, thank you very much. Reds lead 5-1. to one. We begin the eighth inning, and J.J. Hoover takes over on the mound, flips a breaking ball up there to Francisco Lindor, and it's strike one. Boy, has J.J. been good so far this year. Look at the opponent batting average of 157. Now, the Reds have been really, really waiting the first month, month and a half of the year to try to find somebody who would be able to be that bridge to a role as Chapman in a close ball game. I mean, Hoover has become among the very best right-handed setup men in all the National League since really taking over in that spot effectively about a month and a half ago. I mean, he has been lights out. Rain has lightened up a little bit. The grounds crew continues to check in with the home plate umpire Jeff Kellogg after every half inning. Two and two to count on Lindor. And a breaking ball rolled over foul. It'll be followed by Brantley and then Daniel Murphy, David Murphy. You know, the interesting thing about J.J. Hoover is a lot of ways, you know, you look at numbers and you look at numbers inside the numbers nowadays, but Hoover has always been a fly ball pitcher. I mean, really a fly ball pitcher until this year. I mean, he gave up last year 28% ground balls. Bad year for him. Okay. How about the year before that? 32% ground balls. This year he is a bona fide ground ball pitcher. Now he's he's throwing 50% ground balls. And I don't know whether that's because he's getting that curveball over. You just saw fouled off by Lindor there more, or whether he's keeping the ball down on purpose more. But I'm wondering if that has anything to do with his success this year versus in years past. Hamilton will run down the fly ball. One out in the eighth. Indians only four hits tonight against a trio of Leak, Matthews, and now one out into Hoover's eighth inning. Well, scoring Bradley runs one of them. Scoring runs lately for the Indians has been a chore. And you wouldn't think so because you look up and down the lineup and you've got some pretty good players in there with good track records. Not a whole lot even Terry Francona can do if your team doesn't score runs. And he's a good manager. Well, he is a guy whose name will go down uh, in the history of the Boston Red Sox. And I mean, it's going to be right there with any of the Giants because he was a manager that won not only one, but two World Series. After all those decades without winning a World Series for the Boston Red Sox. It's too bad it ended the way it did. It ended ugly. Because Francona did an incredible job there. And remember, this was a guy who 
who his managerial career started and it was a disaster. He had a terrible team in Philadelphia. And I think everybody in baseball realized that that Francona if given a decent situation was a good manager and would have a chance to lead his team to winning a few games. Uh, that Philadelphia team he managed was just awful. Mm -hmm. I mean it was over before it ever started. And there have been a lot of managers through the history of baseball where that's been true. Where the first time, you know, I mean, let's face it, most of the time when a guy becomes a manager for the first time, he's not taking over a club that's probably going to be very good. Yeah, he's getting a team that's in distress. Sure. Because they're looking for a turnaround. Artist, and they may have gone to some other bigger name managers who and said, mm -hmm, "I'm not going. I'm not doing that. I'm waiting until another job opens up." There's that sweet swing of Brantley again, Man. hooked down in the right field corner. Second time Brantley has done that tonight. Second time for a double. I mean, almost identical spots in the strike zone too. That's just a quick, just a quick swing. You know, I'm not comparing him to this player, but that swing reminds me of Barry Bonds. I mean, as quick as he gets the bat head through on that ball that's up. Bonds about had that swing perfected. Mm -hmm. You know, when Francona was hired by the Boston Red Sox after three years as a manager in Philadelphia from 97 to 2000, he was coaching again. And when the Boston Red Sox lost in the 2003 American League Championship Series, that's when Grady Little was a manager, remember? Now, this was a good Boston team. And they had lost in the ALCS. The decisions made by Little about, you know, Pedro, should he have come out of the game? When they had the lead, should he have not come out of the game? And... Francona took over his second go round as a manager for a team that was expected to win. They won 98 games, but finished second in their division in 2004, second to their biggest rival, the New York Yankees. In the wild card, they swept the Angels, and then in the league championship series, they fell behind the Yankees three games to one. And then rallied to become the first team ever in Major League history to come back from a 3-0 deficit to win a playoff series. And there's a strike. And then they swept the St. Louis Cardinals, ending 86 years of frustration for Red Sox fans. Their sixth world title. Off the end of the bat, little dribbler down to Frazier. Two away. But under the category of all good things must come to an end, it didn't last forever in Boston. No, you know, he won it again uh, in 2007. He got his 500th win as the Boston manager in 2009. Got his 1,000th win overall as a manager in 2011. But they had one of the worst collapses in baseball history. They went 7-20 and 20 in the month of September in 2011. And that's when they blew a nine-game lead in September to the Tampa Bay Rays. And the Red Sox, Theo Epstein, decided not to renew Terry Francona's contract despite the fact that he won 744 games and lost only 552 in Boston.
to an 0 1 Carlos Santana. This should be the third out of the inning. That's a long run for Frazier, and it is. So the Reds back in the bottom of the eighth, leading 5 to 1. Here for as low as $12, plus the first 25,000 fans in attendance receive an exclusive Get Your Stash On t shirt thanks to Arm and Hammer. 513 381 Reds. You can visit select Kroger locations or log on to Reds.com slash tickets. Reds bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. They lead five to one in the first of three against their in state rivals from Cleveland, Ohio. And a new pitcher takes over for the Indians. It's a right handed. Following Bauer, Manship, Adams, and Crockett, this is Ryan Webb. Ryan Webb's been a workhorse throughout his major league career, which started in 2009, a couple of years with the Padres, then three years with the Marlins. Last year he spent in 51 games with the Baltimore Orioles. And here he is game number 20 now for the Indians. Big guy, 6'5, 245 pounds from Clearwater, Florida. Reds have Burt Badenhop getting loose in their bullpen. Reds leave 5 to 1. Hamilton Phillips Votto do up here in the bottom of the eighth inning. He played in a steady rain for the last three plus innings, two plus for sure. Tom, we want to send our best wishes out to a, a young man who graduated from Loveland High School this year. He is going to Fort Benning, Georgia on Sunday to become part of the U.S. Army. God bless him. And that would be Taylor Keith. You know his dad, Jeff Keith, who's a oh, baseball coach up there at CHCA. Does Coach a great Keith job. An awesome board. guy. Great guy. Does a lot of great things in the community. Young ball players. But he's saying goodbye to his son who's joining the Army. So, Taylor, we wish you the best. Thank you for your service, Taylor. Yes, sir. I know your mom and dad are very, very proud of you, and all of us are proud of you. Leano to Billy Hamilton leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, we have had lightning. Really, ever since he delayed it, I mean, it, we haven't gone more than what 20 minutes where we haven't seen lightning in the skies above. I don't know. I'm hiding under the counter. Did your mom and dad ever tell you that it don't worry, it's only heat lightning? 
Have, yes. you, have you ever told your yes. kids that? I uh, know. You? I didn't find out until I was an adult that there's no such thing. <laughs> And people ask uh, frequently, it's, I understand it's one of the most frequently asked questions um, on those various websites where you go on the internet. Do you have to have both? Can you have one or the other, thunder or lightning? You have to have both all the time. Tough play here by Lean Doyle. And maybe a little wet, came up a little wet. Would have been a tough play anyway. It's an infield hit for Billy Hamilton, his first tonight. I get the feeling with Billy coming out of the box the way he did that once his ball goes over the pitcher's head, then it's going to be a base hit. Lindor never does get a throw off. He's about as athletic a shortstop as you will see young man is but see what happens when you get the ball on the ground though when you're Billy Hamilton. Atlanta beat the Cubs tonight opening game after the break four to two Milwaukee. Four one lead over the Pirates that game in the top of the ninth inning. In the water. Oh. That looked like a oh. serious cross up there, and uh, saying his prayers is Jeffrey Kellogg. The Gomes got a glove on that. I think you say a little more than that. He's thanking Jan Gomes. Gomes is going for a pitch out. Webb missed the sign, and Kellogg is ducking. Can you imagine being Kellogg right there? Look at the look. Standing there before the glove all of a sudden came popping up, and that fastball is coming right at your face. Did, did you see the look that Jan Gomes gave Ryan Webb? It was like, hey, Ryan Webb, I know we're teammates, but this guy behind me, I got to take care of him. Billy 44 stolen bases in 50 attempts. There he goes. And now he's standing on third. 45 stolen bases for Billy Hamilton. You know, Hamilton has had an opportunity. 75 times to steal a base this year, meaning he's on base. The base in front of him is open, conceivably could steal it if he so chooses. He has chosen to do so 67% of the time. The next closest attempt rate in all the baseball is 28% of the time, D. Gordon. That is incredible. That's a guy who gets on and says, we're not doing a lot of waiting around. And next thing you know, he's on third. Well, he's only been thrown out six times, and one of those six was by Jan Gomes in Cleveland. Brandon gets this one right off the ankle bone. Oh. Infield in for the tribe. Runner at third. Nobody out in the eighth inning. And there goes Hamilton. Here comes a throw to the plate, and he says, Wow. Wow, wow, wow. The third baseman had him stopped in his tracks no more than two steps off the bag. And the second he cocked a fire, off Hamilton went. Well, Hamilton shuffled back, and that was a smart thing by Billy. He had in his mind he was going on that anyway. I'm not really sure how you you score that. It'll be interesting to see what they say over next well, door. Round down in RBI. It's like an infield playing back. I don't know how it would be any different. I guess it would be. 
It's almost more like a stolen base. Yeah, really. you're, you're exactly right. But I mean, it, it, you know, memo to the third baseman, you've got to actually get him to face the bag and go that way, run that way, or else he's going to do that on you. We saw him go from second to third on a, a throwback to the pitcher in Miami. And man, you, you just keep saying to yourself, if he can only get on base more frequently because it is not even close. There are a lot of things you can debate about baseball. Best power hitter, best arm, best range at short, best fastball, best slider, best changeup, best throwing arm as a catcher. All these different things you can qualify, quantify, you can talk about, you can debate, you can do everything else. There is one aspect of Major League Baseball where there is absolutely no debate in any way, shape, and form. And that would be who is the single most disruptive base runner in the Major Leagues today. It is not even close. There's Billy Hamilton, and then you can start debating about who's second. So you say if you can just find a way to get that on base percentage. From 269 so far this year. If you could get that thing to the 350, 340, you'd love it higher than that. But man, if you could get that thing somewhere up around there, I mean, you're talking a hundred stolen bases in a year. How many runs scored? How many countless mistakes pitchers make to the batter at the plate while you're on base because they're worried about you? Time will tell. And Milo takes a walk. going to ask for the grounds crew to come out. Evidently he didn't like the way that mound feels under his feet. I can see why it's been drizzling and raining and drizzling and raining just about all night long. Well follow each and every Reds game and stick around afterwards right here on Fox Sports Ohio. We'll have Reds live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda for a complete recap and interviews from the locker room. We'll break it all down for you. I don't know if they still use the same stuff now, Tom, as they used to, the, the, the drying agent that they put on the ground out there. But it used to be that the stuff that I think they used would be ground up corn husks. And it would really do a job. It did a good job? Yeah. This seems to be a little bit more granular. Well, maybe they just have a better machine to well, round that, it up. Well, there, there's the machine that the guy that pours it out, but they probably had to buy that stuff by the pallet this year. We're going to make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. And uh, Webb says, uh, looks good. Yeah. Nice going, guys. Now, does he turn around right there and, and look at the grounds crew guys and say, hey, guys, thanks? I would hope so. Sometimes, though, you know, you, you've already given up a run, a quirky run. You might be too into the game to to mind your manners. Yeah. Okay. Here's Todd Frazier, 0 for 4 tonight. Billy Hamilton running his way into a, a run here in the eighth inning. Hopper down to third. 
There's one. And we are off to the ninth inning. Reds trying to tie a ribbon around the opener this three game series, leading six to one. NL West leading Dodgers taking on the NL East leading Nationals and it's seven the Battle of the Buckeyes State Reds and the Indians and you can only see both games on Fox Sports 1 our coverage begins at 4 Eastern and streaming live on Fox Sports Go so an outstanding double dip tomorrow. Well, our flamethrower of the night brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce happened back in the first inning. Francisco Lindor at the plate and a strikeout by Mike Leake. 91 miles an hour on this fastball. One of two strikeouts that Leake had on the night. Worth looking at again on the outside corner. A little kind of backdoor cutter right there. Nice pitch by Leake. He had a good outing tonight. Leake did. Six innings of four hit one run baseball. And Burke Badenhop. 34th game for Burke. All right, so three outs to go as we continue to play in the rain here in Cincinnati. Indians scored their only run in the sixth inning against Lee. Single by Lean Door, double by Brantley, sent Lean Door to third. One out later, a ground out would play him, but Gomes into the inning on a fly ball to center. So now Baden Hop. As he grew up in northern Ohio, but actually closer to Detroit, Michigan, than Cleveland, Ohio. Not a huge difference as far as the ride in the car is concerned in Perrysburg, Ohio, but a ride nonetheless. So what are you saying? He was the Tiger fan growing up? Most of the people up and around Perrysburg are. You, when you drive up there, and I know you did so this yeah. year when the Reds played up in Detroit, when you get up in that part of Ohio, you will see a lot of Detroit Tigers bumper stickers yeah. on the back of automobiles driving around and a lot of Detroit Lion fans up there. Down the right field line. Bruce goes in. Did, did he get it? No, he did oh. not. Pretty close, though, for Jay Bruce. I think he had it. May have popped out of his glove when he hit the top of the railing. That's a great effort. Uh, never did have it. I like the effort anyway. Mm -hmm. Next one ripped up the third baseline off the bat of Jan Gomes, and that'll be a double. To open up the ninth inning.
Gomes is the one that hit that ball at Todd Frazier a couple of at bats ago. The Frazier gloved the ball just like that. He gloved it and then threw it away at first base, and Gomes ended up on second with a two base error. Strike one on Brandon Moss. Moss tonight hitless in three at bats is grounded into a double play, fouled out to Frazier, and flying out to Bird and left. Pull to the right side. Yes, the runner will advance to third, but that's an out. Well, don't you love the way Brandon Phillips goes down and fields those ground balls? I mean, the ones that are the, you know, the 25 hoppers to him. He never just goes down and puts his glove down. Look how he gets down on this ball. I mean, there is no way that ball's getting by him. This should be the second out of the inning. It is. The runner will stop after Bruce cuts it loose to the plate. Two away in the ninth. Now Giovanni Ursula thinks he's got one right here and Gomes decides no way. So, Badenhop has to be happy about that. Can save an earned run right here by getting Mike Abilis out. Is, uh, this has been uh, just a rough year for him, and there is no other way to describe it. It is the most helpless sort of feeling in the world when a child, one of his children, uh, has been diagnosed with a terrible disease, and he's been in and out of the hospital uh, their entire family, uh, Cleveland Clinic. And certainly our thoughts and prayers are with him and his entire family. One two pitch. Fly ball short center Billy is there. And that will do it. The Reds win the opener. Of this three game series against the Cleveland Indians. They now won nine in a row over the tribe. 6 1. Our final tonight. Back with more from Great American Ballpark in a moment.